Mike Slade, you've raised just under £28 million through a share placing this week. I'll come to your intentions uh, on that in a moment, but can I ask who exactly has bought in? Because that's 10% of the company, which is significant, isn't it? Yeah, it's a small amount, but it's all we want. We use our capital pretty, we make it work very hard. So a little becomes a lot, and that's been the helical sort of modus operandi since we started. The main shareholder base have supported us, which is, is uh, very comforting. And uh, we were thrilled with the result, and equally thrilled because there are three or four um, major UK institutions who haven't been shareholders for quite a while. People come and go over the years. We've been doing this for 24 years. And uh, they came to the party as well. So, so they've come back in. And, and you get this at these sort of times. Some institutions, cleverly, luckily, however it is, are out of the market and actually looking to come in to back a good story. They will have backed a positive story. I doubt that they would do a distress rescue, but they're prepared to back a positive story and been waiting for such a one. And they, happily for us, decided we were one for them to go with. So welcome the new shareholders as well. Were you surprised by the response? Yes, we were very pleased. One, the fact that it was hugely oversubscribed, um, which is great. We don't need more, so that's the way we did what we did. We were only able, under a cash box situation, to raise 10% of the company's equity. But the placing, um, the strike price was, was very favourable for us. We're thrilled with that. Did any, did any existing or new shareholder take a significant stake? Um, one or two surprised me by the amounts they were prepared to put in. And uh, sadly, it had been scaled back a bit. But that's positive for the aftercare, as they call it. Ooh, can, you, so, can you name those? No, I shouldn't name any individual shareholders. Kind. All right. Now, you've referred to this fundraising as a chance to take care of, in your words, a once or twice in a career buying opportunity. So I think the obvious question is, when will you start buying? Well, it's important to start as of now. Um, but it's a difficult one, you see, because if you take your, your sort of three major um, points of property and you ask yourself, are rents going to come down? Yes. Okay. Are tenants going to become scarcer? Yes. Are values going to continue to fall? Yes. So you're faced with those three blindingly obvious points, and yet you want to buy. Now is when you can walk in and say, okay, I don't know if there's going to be a major further calamity in the British uh, banking world. I don't know if there's going to be some huge uh, further shocks in terms of a major corporation going bust or whatever. I suspect there probably is a lot of nasty still to come out. We know there are in a small way, but there might be a big one. But despite that, you know, you're a seller because you can't be certain and you want to protect your position. I'm a buyer and prepared to take that risk. Okay, just on that. Uh £28 million pounds that, that you raised. Casanova this week uh, translated that into buying power of about £500 million. Pounds. But that, that does, the, the criteria was that uh, you found investors mm. uh, who are prepared to come in with another 90% worth mm -hmm. of equity and a loan to value ratio of about 50%. I mean, how close, to you, uh, how close are you to securing, well, t to meeting that, that criteria, basically? Well, it's a question of what we find. And, uh, and uh, the relationships are, are, are cemented to a degree that we are confident now we are, as of this moment, able to walk into um, a particular vendor that we will have by now obviously identified and say, listen, we can put down £200 million in cash within seven days. Do you want it? And on what basis do you want it? And that's quite a strong argument. Um, Any particular markets? No, take whatever comes. I mean, we're, we're happy as helical, as you might know. I mean, we do industrials, we do retail, we do city offices, we do offices, whatever. We're quite able, I think, to actually um, go into most sectors. So you take what comes through the door. You've alluded to uh, the banks and the problems they're facing. Mm -hmm. I mean, from uh, a developer like Helical Bar's perspective, though, I mean, how tough is it to get any cash out of them at the moment? It works both ways, doesn't it? If it's a good deal for us, it should be a good deal for your banker. And that's where the balance was wrong, 25, 26, 27. The balance was wrong. It was too good a deal for us and a grotty, awful deal for the banks, as it turned out. Now, this time round, just think about it. 
When a bank can lend into a transaction that has a 200% cover in terms of interest to, to in, uh, income to interest and is a 50 or 60 or 65, I mean a senior debt only position rather than the Metsteins and the, the top ups and slices they went into to, to create more interest rate, to create more equity involvement, but over the top. So all we're asking is senior debt. And then you look at the grade A proposition that I'm suggesting we would be buying into. Um, uh, then you can see that it is a good time for a bank to actually lend. Now, who is there to do it? Because they're all running around. And uh, I suggest that at least two, I suggest the RBS will very shortly be in a position, settled in knowledge of where they stand, to start looking to do what I might describe as good business going forward. And of course a chief executive who knows the industry. Well maybe he knows too much and says, no, no, I, we shouldn't go anywhere near that lot again, who knows. <laughs> no, but th there is an opportunity, I think the RBS might well be able to take it up. You're not going to be able to borrow large chunks, they're going to have to do club deals. There aren't that many to make club deals with, they're not syndications, no one's going to take a 400 million debt on package in. Um, and then syndicated uh, on a risk basis behind them. That's out of the window, has been for about two years now. But they'll be doing club deals maybe, but who else? I think the HSBC are, in capable, are, are capable of doing that. Um, and let's wait and see about Lloyds later. Um, there are three German banks who um, unquestionably are ready to do that. And the world's a big place. You entered a joint venture in November last year with the North American investor. Uh, I think the figure mm -hmm. bandied about was £500 million. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how does this latest fundraising fit into that? It simply just gives us more capital to put into it. You know, we're that confident of them and what we're going to be able to do that we would like a larger share of it. There's no more than that. Okay. Simple as that. So the funds are pulled, they're not looking at different types of assets or anything like that? They, the, the It'll be deal by deal. What we sought out to, to find, and Kaznov helped introduce us, validated and introduced these particular North American partners who are private funds, so they don't have regulation sitting on their back as much, and even in funny way as I do. But they're free to do whatever they choose to do as business people. So they've come along on the basis that they will be exclusive to us, but we are not exclusive to them. So the smaller stuff, my existing business, my shareholders business, can carry on as normal. So that's a big tick in my box. And um, this fund, together with them, for, shall we call it opportunity purchases in the current marketplace, smaller stuff I can continue to do, smaller stuff I can do with another UK-based shareholder, um, not shareholder, fund, joint venture, one-to-one, one-offs. Big stuff, come on boys, we found one, you know? And, and it all comes back into the pot. Each transaction will be each transaction, it'll be just like a normal transaction, but we'll be sharing it, albeit leading and managing it. And it will be sold, and profits hopefully will then be distributed to my shareholders, and my partners will have their profits as well. We're not tied in. And if we like the arrangement, we'll keep it. If we don't like it, we'll back it up. Which is perfect. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way I could find to do it. Can you, can you name the North American private? We've been asked not to. For a number of reasons, I won't bore you with. They're all perfectly good. Um, it's very much a question of, won't it be nice when we've done the first transaction, we can go out and mention, uh, not so much the terms, that's private, but to go out and mention actually who it is and, and the whole rationale behind it. It's, it's pretty impressive. Speaking of first transactions then, how close are you? I mean, I, I imagine you've been circling, or you're a, you've got a short list of assets you've been eyeing up recently. Funnily enough, no. Um, we monitor everything that's going on, and uh, that's been quite a lot more than one would actually going on under the surface. Who's looking at what, who's done what, and on what terms and why. Uh, a number of discussions with our various advisors as to you know, how we will then go about um, doing deals with banks, how we'll be going about doing deals with institutions. So they're all slightly different mechanisms, slightly different mechanisms. And uh, uh, there's well-tried things with banks. You can take, you can take property off a bank's balance sheet onto a, a, an off-balance sheet vehicle, which you would then run, they would lend into, 
it's an amalgam of loan to own and off balance sheet uh, transactions and that's quite a tried route you're analyzing or you're really just getting ready you know there's no mad rush here but I would like to say that as of now we are open doors to do the business as of now as I say we can walk in and say by Friday we can give you cash Mike Slade thanks very much